If you've ever heard of Henry T. Ford or Steve Jobs, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Guys, welcome to today's episode. It's about a man um, who's known as Brendan Turax, um, the late Brendan Turax. Why are these gentlemen in common? Basically, Henry T. Ford bought you the motor car, yeah? So he made, I guess, motor cars available and um, to the mainstream public, yeah? Steve Jobs need no introduction. He made the mobile phone and smartphone together with the iPad and iPhone. <sighs> Music available to the general public. In my opinion, Brendan Turax uh, is held at the same esteem compared to this gentleman because he made affordable skincare. In my opinion, he's revolutionized skincare because he's cut through the trans he's, cut, he's very transparent. He's cut through the BS, the marketing, um, the clouds, and I guess the fog behind the skincare industry. Told us what active ingredients are listed in the mound, uh, minus the packaging, minus the BS, mar minus the marketing. And he was the first guy really to use um, in a mainstream company to use social media to his advantage to actually market this based upon reputation, cost, and transparency. So in my opinion, he's really shook the skincare industry. Has he made a big dent in La Mer? Um, I don't think so, because these customers, um, speaking from experience, these customers, you go, hey, you know, um, $10 moisturizer compared to a $300 moisturizer, um, no competition. Even if you try, even if you speak for him for an hour, yeah? <laughs> Saying, hey, I'm a dermatologist, uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's no difference. In fact, it's shown that if you use high-end products, you're going to use less of it. Yeah, so the moisturizer, because it prevents trans-epidermal water loss, is actually going to work a lot less, um, a lot less effective compared to a cheap moisturizer, which you're going to use a lot of frequently. So you're not going to lather this on your, unless you're some kind of Kardashian, you're not going to lather this on your legs, you know, three, four times a day using 15 grams at a time. You'll go through this in, um, in a day, yeah? Can anyone afford you know, $300 moisturizer in a day? Probably not. If you're even gonna use this on the face, yeah? Someone who's got dry skin and you're gonna use it twice a day and using 30 mils, you're going through at least five grams on your face um, twice a day. So let's say you use experimentally eight days, yeah? Um, eight grams, yeah? Multiply that by four. This will go through, you'll go through this. If you get dry skin or even someone like eczema, you go through this in about three days. So that's why I was talking about the, uh, affordability versus the actual amount you're going to use. If someone's going to use, let's say, a vitamin uh, B or vitamin C or vitamin A, you know, and this costs like $10, you're going to use it, yeah? Uh, and same with moisturizers, because for example, this is his moisturizer. Do I like it? Yes, I do. This is my preferred moisturizer at times in summer. Um, and certainly the vitamin C is really good as well. But hey, look, let's get back to this. So Brendan Turax, yeah, he's a gentleman that actually uh, heralds from uh, Canada. He was a computer scientist and um, did programming before he went into biochemistry and into pharmacology. The ordinary no needs no introduction. In four years, he's created a brand that is, has got global awareness for being um, both competitive in the market, but most importantly, being transparent. It's given, I guess, the general public, all of us out there, a chance to actually afford skincare um, that otherwise you would normally not afford or actually buy things which are um, extraordinarily expensive, um, which may not be of any added benefit. Man, I sound like a salesman. Uh, by the way, this video is not endorsed, okay? None of my videos are endorsed. Um, this is what I think of The Ordinary. Um, as you know, you've seen my reviews on The Ordinary. I actually love this product. Once again, it might not suit everyone. All I'm saying is that they've got things out there which may suit your skin. Their science is solid, their foundation is strong, right? So the marketing behind it, like I said, is based upon social media. They don't go out there advertising much at all. In fact, a lot of people ask them for interviews, ask Brendan Turax for interviews, and the controversy of which he led his life has, I guess, also contributed to the success of this, um, this company. So he passed away last week, yeah? We don't know the, I guess, scenario causing his death. Some people think it's suicide. Some people think it's an accident. Some people think it's foul play. Uh, all we know is that he was involved with uh, big companies like Estee Lauder, who had a good stake uh, holding in Dicium. 
In fact, he was ousted from being the CEO last year. Uh, once again, all controversy uh, surrounding that was uh, lots of speculation. Was it? No speculation because he admitted it to drug intake, to alcohol intake, all the bad things out there. Yeah. So, guys, um, lots of controversy out there. But this gentleman, uh, I don't judge him based upon how he led his life. I judge him upon his academic um, skill sets. I guess his entrepreneurship. Um, and his, um, I guess, insight, but most importantly, that his passion, absolute passion about skincare, to create unbelievable things um, at such a fraction of the cost and to be so transparent about it. So just to give you an idea, I, I didn't know about this until I actually read up about them um, because I don't really care how much this costs to make, but Brendan Turax actually admits, uh, so once again, it's not industry secrets, he actually admits this online. So if you Google enough, um, you'll find a lot of information on Brendan. So just as a guide, how much do you think this costs to make? Okay, so this other, so this is, I'll read it out to you, nice and my 10% plus zinc 1% um, in, a, in a nice base, yeah? So this, if it was a high-end company, a high-ish end company, um, such as something like Elizabeth Arden, yeah, uh, Clinique, you can call them medium to high-end companies, they'll sell this for at least um, $80 all the way up to $150. But as you know, you can buy this from the ordinary for $10 to $12. So how much does it cost to make? Have a guess, comments below. I'll tell you shortly. No, I'll tell you next week. No, I'm just joking, I'll tell you now. So this is Brendan Turak's um, breakdown. Okay, niacinamide, 10%. He buys niacinamide uh, by the kilo. Right, so one kilo costs $10, so that's how much it costs, right? Um, the cost price of this, in his statement, costs a dollar to make, so one dollar to make. That's the cost price. And within that dollar, obviously, it's the active ingredients, things like zinc and niacinamide. Uh, zinc, as you know, if you muck around with, um, not that I'm saying you should, but if you muck around with homemade explosives, um, zinc is very expensive to, block, to buy, same with aluminium and all that sort of stuff, but anyway, it's not that channel for this. Um, and I don't know how to make IEDs, by the way, anyone watching. Um, so, nice and right, um, 10%, zinc 1%. Good active ingredients. Uh, the base costs bugger all to make, um, and the packaging is, as you can see, it's a cardboard box, so not much at all. The marketing, like I said, is decreased or markedly uh, decreased compared to other companies. So a lot of the things which actually cost for this is actually in the research and development. That's why his products, if you see a lot of dermatologists or, or, or um, skincare experts, and they have, they're not biased to things, they'll read this out and they'll go, wow, you know, 10 bucks, you can't go wrong. If you don't like it, just give it to someone else, you can't go wrong. And this is why he's revolutionized skincare, it's because he's made things affordable uh, to the general public, which I guess in the past, even five years ago, um, most people would not afford you know, a, a hyaluronic acid cream or a vitamin C, ascorbic acid. Uh, and in order to follow the ABCs, the you know, vitamin A with the retinoids, uh, the vitamin B, which we covered, the vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid, together with the hyaluronic acid and alpha hydroxy acids, the entry point for that's like $300 worth of um, skincare. And the sad thing is that some people don't even tolerate that. So with the ordinary, they've given, he's given people a chance to get into really extraordinary skincare for minimum of the price of what it ordinarily is. So even if you look at things like, um, you know, for example, one of my favorites, the granular active retinoid, he's done a lot of um, research in regards to this. Do I think it works? Well, like any other retinoid, you're not gonna put it in your face and go, wow, you know, I've got less wrinkles or less pigmentation, but do I think it works? <laughs> I think it's like any other retinoid. It's gonna help prevent things, yeah, and gives you ownership of your skincare. So even if it does minimal, you're only paying 10 bucks every two or three months. If you get skin irritation, which this one has much less of because it's granular compared to a retinoid suspension, um, you just use less of it, yeah? So that's why I said it, it's, I really respect Brendan uh, for what he's done for the skincare community. He's really revolutionized things. Um, the other thing as well is that I can see, you know, in his interviews, what he was gonna do next. And next he was gonna tackle medical conditions. So things like dermatologists see all the time. Um, do we feel threatened by that? No, because guess what? There's one less patient we need to actually see because most of us are so busy that, um, you know, uh, 
patients having ownership of their skin is celebrated by most good dermatologists because we just go, cool, you've, <laughs> you've been educated. And that's what I like to see. I like to see patients who come in and they're super educated in regards to their skin. So what Turax has done is that he has uh, integrated disease-specific uh, conditions, for example, acne, rosacea, seb dermatitis, eczema. And his future was to actually address these with uh, ingredients and active products. Where he was going to go for 2019, from what I understand, um, once again, just pure reading and his interviews, was that he was going to help with acne and acne scarring. How is he going to do that? In my opinion, he would have been an asset to the acne scar industry because he was going to develop, uh, once again, transparent, cost-effective products. So his main rival was going to be um, proactive, Roden and Fields. So he was in development of benzyl peroxide between 2.5 and 5%, uh, together with uh, retinoids, which in my opinion would have just revolutionized um, the scar, I guess the scar community in the future. So basically, he would have invented products which would have been cheap as, yeah? He would have been about 5 to $10. So that even third world countries can afford um, acne treatments. And he was going to do the same for all the other skin conditions, rosacea, septum, eczema. Um, the insight of this gentleman is fantastic. And um, I salute him. And it, it really is a life worth celebrating. I hope um, Dicium remains uh, very... I guess, clear in regards to their vision uh, because the founder actually had a vision and I hope that they maintain ethical skincare, uh, both for the patients, but also if they maintain ethical skincare at an affordable price. All the other companies, you know, we're talking about um, companies which I really like, like La Roche Posay, all the other companies will have to follow. In other words, they will have to pick up the act um, and yield cost-effective products which work. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very quick one, and um, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's, worth, it's worth thinking about. If you're after skincare, can I recommend, uh, without saying I'm endorsed, which I'm not, uh, The Ordinary, both for hyaluronic acid as a um, awesome moisturizer, and I'll just go through three products, yeah? Um, the Granular Active Retinoid, which I think is a great form of vitamin A. And it's up to you. If you have oily skin like mine with a little bit of rosacea, um, niacinamide, or ascorbic acid. Okay, guys, um, I'll see you next week. Please hit the subscribe button, comment, share, like, and do all the good things which make this channel grow. Catch you later. Bye. Maxim, enough! Come on, dogs, what are you doing? Oh, Daddy's recording a video here. Come on, dogs, stop barking, okay? I'm trying to do a video. Um, in the future, he was going to... Dogs, man. Dogs. Uh, Max, come here! So what, Turak?